The catfish industry in the Philippines is growing and projected to expand in the coming years. The present production can hardly supply the demands of the buyers. Hi guys! It's a beautiful day once again and welcome back to Dexter's World Channel. Today's video is another mind-blowing video because this is all about catfish and catfish farming had been the source of good income for all people across the globe and I would like to share my experiences how did I become successful in this field of fish farming. The interesting question that we will discuss today is how to grow our catfish within a short period of time. The first tip that I can share with you is the proper stocking. Stocking a pond is the act of introducing fish fingerlings into the pond for rearing. We must be aware that the stocking density greatly affects the growth of the catfish. The most common mistake that a catfish farmer will commit are two. First is the overstocking. Normally, we are tempted to overstock in the name of trying to raise more number of fishes will not only affect the growth and general performance of your fish but will also cause you great loss as a fish farmer as there will be low growth rate due to competition for space and food. Number two is the understacking. This is underutilization of the tank capacity. It occurs when the fish is far below carrying capacity of the pond resulting in wastage of resources. The correct stocking should be 100 catfish per square meter. So guys, I'm here in the pond of our catfish and this measures around uh, 12 or 13 square meters and I have raised more than 700 of this catfish and they are all breeders and you will see that they already have expected to be fed. This breakfast is already anticipated and you will see them very hungry over here. See that? And uh, I'm so amazed by the way how they grow if we are just going to put the correct number of fish in the tank. What I mean is that we will not underpopulate and we will not also overpopulate our fish. So I will feed them now with this uh, floater pellet and they will have this eating frenzy now. And they can consume every morning three kilos of this uh, pellet. Oh, they really love to splash. And most of them are already pregnant. Hey, catfish, do not splash the water. Okay, okay, <laughs> I'm already soaked with water. What are you doing? Oh. Up! Ah, sorry. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> the manner on how we grow this catfish, whether it's a commercial or in a backyard scale, is really very amazing. Why? Because we grow them even without the submersible pump. As you can see here, we don't even use the air pump. 
they are living in a plain water. And our way of determining whether or not there's a need to change the water is to just feel their conditions. If I feel that they are not eating anymore, like the way you saw it, then we will reduce half of the water and then put in some new water, only 50% of that. And this is what we are doing. It's really very effective. So we don't have to spend the consumption of electricity for the catfish. They can live even in a tank with only plain water. Nothing more, nothing less. Another thing that would lead us to success in this catfish farming is regular sorting. This is to reduce competition that may affect the growth of the fish. Under this process, you can also do the proper stocking system. In this regular sorting, we're gonna get out of the pond the fast growers that would probably eat the seedlings which are small and weak. In my case, I do the regular sorting which is three times a month Reckon from the first day of hatch. I will get all the fast growers and put them in the pan where they have almost the same size. The other one is the feeding method. We must understand that the catfish are carnivorous, so their feed is 90% meat of other protein sources. They can be fed with ground fresh fish, chicken entrails, or dried or fresh shrimps. One of the reasons why I am very inspired to do this catfish farming is because they are for food consumption and they can be the best alternative for chicken and meat and this is very healthy because you can just easily grow them and raise them anywhere you like you can raise them in the mud pan or you can raise them in this uh, concrete tank i would like to specifically mention about the safety and growth Safety is very important. We may be able to breed massively of our catfish, but I already have experience killing all my catfish in one instance because I gave them the wrong food. And the food that I'm talking about is the hard-boiled egg. The hard-boiled egg can really cause the contamination of the water if it's given plenty. I mean, the unconsumed boiled eggs would certainly make the water very dangerous for our catfish. During the early stage of the life of this baby catfish, they should be fed with dapnia or other live food. So this is our tank for our 10 days old baby catfish. We are now about to give them their breakfast. And I usually give them live food during the breakfast, though they can already eat commercial food. But I deem it really very necessary to feed them in the morning with live food because this live food will actually make them grow very, very fast. Twice, thrice faster than just giving them the commercial food. So you will see here, the baby catfish is trying to consume all the worms that we are offering them as their breakfast. And in here we have this uh, 5,000 baby catfish and I expect that we can harvest more than 70% of this because there are really casualties and mortalities. And uh, the mud pan is actually the best place for the baby catfish during the first three weeks because I observed that there is less mortality when the one day or two days old catfish are being transferred in the mud pan. And my method here is I'm going to transfer them during the night 
because during the night the temperature is cold. These baby catfish are very sensitive if they gonna be transferred during noontime because they cannot survive in high temperatures, especially when they're babies. You know, last week we had a renovation effort by means of making this pond more deeper in preparation for this catfish growing. I am having fun with this project because their growth is rapid. This African catfish was introduced all over the world in the early 1980s for aquaculture purposes and the Philippines has already enough sources of fingerlings from the small scale farmers. In fact, you can find these fingerlings online through Facebook groups. And if you are interested to know about how to breed this catfish? Well, this channel, Dexter's World, has already enough videos about the tips on how to breed naturally our catfish that will give us high yield of this amazing fish. If you have a 10 square meter concrete tank, you can raise up to 1,000 fingerlings. You can put 75 to 100 fingerlings per square meter of space and feed them the 90% protein. This type of concrete tank catfish farming can be done also in your backyard. The size of the pond depends on your available space and resources that include an initial capital, but I would suggest that you should start small, especially if it is your first time. If you are having hard times in finding a job, then maybe catfish farming is one of the best options that you can take because there are really many people who became really, really very rich out of this catfish farming. And we already have so many videos about the tutorials on how to go about these things. And I would like to invite you to browse all our videos about catfish farming. And I would like to make a shout out to the members of this channel and even to the regular viewers, our avid fans, and even to those ones who made comments in the comment box, thanks a lot. You just don't know how you inspired me to do all these things. And I would like to see you in my next video, only here at Dexter's World. Music